In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, with the feast. There's a way in which the Lord speaks to us when we're gathered that he does not speak to us when we're alone. And I certainly find that to be the case when I'm trying to prepare sermons. He says more to me about what I should say when we have gathered than when I'm struggling with it in my home, sometimes for hours and not knowing what direction to go in. And just as an aside before we start, we heard in the gospel today the opening words were, now when Jesus heard that John had been been put in prison, his cousin was put into prison for speaking out against Herod's adultery. And... um, in fact, in one of the scriptures, it speaks about how Herod actually would spend time talking with John and getting illumination from him before he made a very regretful vow and had to have his head chopped off. And I was thinking about how John ends up in Hades, in the land of the dead, in Sheol. And when our Lord dies, of course, upon the cross, One of the people that our Lord encounters is his cousin and says, Come on, John, let's go. We're out of here. What you did has borne fruit, though it didn't seem that way. Every single encounter that we have with God brings us face to face with the scripture that says, No one can see God and live. And as I've mentioned before, but we do see God. So what does that mean? That means that in every encounter that we have, even with our Lord Jesus Christ, we die. We have to die. We must die in one form or another. We either die in a death that stays dead if we reject him, And we die in a death that ends up in resurrection if we receive him and what he is all about and what he is doing for us. But thus, in every encounter, there's death. And for those who believe, there is resurrection. The word of God is a two-edged sword. It brings life to those who choose to believe And it brings death to those who refuse to believe. We heard in the blessing of the water that the waters at the time of Noah destroyed death, destroyed sin in the overwhelming of the the land. When Moses goes through the Red Sea with the Israelites, they go through from death into life. Well, of course, death comes upon Pharaoh and his soldiers. Death and resurrection are always there. When Jesus is baptized in the waters of the Jordan, he takes upon us all of our sin. He absorbs it into his human body and in obedience to his Father enters the waters of death and rises. And of course that's a precursor for him of what he's going to do on the cross. But his whole coming to earth is an entrance into death. For we are a people who are dead in our sin. We deserve death because of our sin. And it is where we go because of our sin. And so he enters into the world. Why? Because though we deserve it, it is not the desire of his father that that be 
the result. Is it our right to live only by the will of God, but not according to our behavior, to our actions? According to our behavior and actions, we are under the rule and control of Satan. But he comes, and he enters into the world. And as it says, after he found out that John had been thrown into prison, it says he departed to Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came to dwell in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness, the people who sat in the land of the dead, the land, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, a light has dawned. Jesus has just, before this scripture, been for 40 days in the wilderness, fasting, and then he was tempted by the devil. He was offered a whole lot of really wonderful gifts, the kinds of wonderful opportunities that the world is constantly offering to us, glory, power, and might, as long as we submit to him. And the Lord, being the Lord of glory, rejected all of this. And knowing the scriptures and what God's calling truly is for us, gained victory over Satan right then and there. But then the whole rest of his ministry is about overcoming death and sin. And so every time we hear the gospel, the Lord is inviting us to be humble, to acknowledge our unworthiness, to acknowledge that we deserve nothing good. We deserve the COVID. We deserve the wars and the deaths that occur because we allow our passions, our sufferings to rule us and do not allow the Lord to rule in our lives. We deserve these things. But on the other side, the Lord says, but I desire to deliver you from these things. That's why he goes out and heals the sick, the paralytics, the blind, the deaf. That's why he shows the examples of resurrection from the dead. And that's why he forgives the sins. Because he says, I don't want this for you. And I'm showing you and giving you a way out. I, 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 I am the way. John's gospel has a whole series of sayings in which Jesus says, I am. Which, first of all, connects him to his father, Ha'on, the I am, the existing one. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the resurrection. I am the forgiveness of sins. Not just the one who gives life, but is our life, is our resurrection, is our glorification. If we separate the Lord from his humility, from his humbleness, from his fleshly being, and just regard him as God, we are Donatist heretics. But if we just regard him as a human being and reject his divinity, we are also Donatist heretics. The Lord takes our humanity. That's what this blue is, by the way. This blue represents our humanity, which he puts on. And this red represents his divinity. Just as Mary has her humanity underneath and is clothed in divinity. 
And he invites us to allow his divinity to clothe us with his, to, to clothe our humanity and to glorify us. But our glorification only comes in humility. And when we stand in pride and arrogance, we lose our divinity. We lose the presence of God in our lives. Pride, remember, my brothers and sisters, is the sin of Lucifer, of Satan, that caused him to be cast down from the heavens. And it is the one thing he encourages in each and every one of us to have, to see ourselves as more important and more special than anybody else. As a priest, I'm called to see you as more important and more blessed of the Lord and less a sinner than I am. Same thing, you for me. We are to treat each other with honor and respect. God puts people in our lives to help us. And when we think that we can do it ourselves, we go to hell. Because as someone has said, the only thing you can do alone is go to hell. Salvation can only be done in community, in the fullness of the body of Christ of whom he is the head. So my brothers and sisters, come at the end of the service and receive the holy water. If you've brought your containers, please take some home to bless your houses. And I gave out something last year for the blessing of houses. Someone asked me the other day, are you going to be blessing houses? And I said, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to pull it off. Father uh, Sebastian is sick again right now. He and I have been taking turns being sick with one thing or another since just before Christmas. And it hasn't been COVID so far. But we're being encountering more and more people who are having COVID. And so we need to be a little careful about that. But you can bless your own homes and should be, in fact, every day, asking God's blessing and power upon you in your homes. Humble yourself, and the Lord shall exalt you. And I just want to end with, the Lord is, God is the Lord from the Matin service. It's one of the scriptures that I've got memorized and say every day, and this is a portion of it. God has re is the Lord and has revealed himself to us. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy is en is endures forever. All the nations surrounded me. Sound familiar? In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. God is the Lord and has revealed himself to us. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord.